What is going on guys? This is Mike Williams from Cartoon Universe. I'm joined by Haley. Hey guys. And uh, we actually have, this is a theory, but it's it's a discussion also. Uh, for Star Wars Force of Evil, which is new, we haven't done uh, one of these in a while in any uh, significant capacity, but if you didn't know, there was actually a book that just came out that got announced all the way last year in D23, we actually got to see the initial announcement of, which was the Star Wars vs. Force of Evil uh, Book of Spells. And there's a lot of juicy, juicy lore goodness in here. So uh, I don't know if you want to start it off, Haley. There's something in here specifically that might point to Marco and a lot of other Earthlings being human. Mm -hmm. Well, first off, I just want to tell everyone to get this book. It's only $20 if you have um, a bookstore by you or just Amazon. That's also a very quick method of getting it. Um, I'm not sure about other countries, but in the United States, so. Um, so, basically, what I'm going to talk about today, Michael and I are going to discuss, because we've been having a back and forth conversation about this, and I thought it'd be great to make a video on it, since we can't really agree, but my stance <laughs> on this is that from what we learned in the book, is that um, some humans came to Earth uh, a long time ago, and then eventually, um, these are the ancestors of Marco, which is why, which would explain his kind of penchant for magic and how he's able to get those cheat marks so quickly. So first, let's let's just go back to the beginning of where it came up in the book. So actually, it was pretty much at the beginning. We learned about Skywin. I'm, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce her name, but I'm mm -hmm. going to go with that. She is the Queen of Hours, and she was the 27th Queen. And she became Queen at 17 years old, which is apparently very young. And her mom found ruling to be boring, so she just gave her the role to be Queen. So basically, what happened? If you were wondering for the book why there was, we don't see the other 26 queens notes in the book is because on her wand passing ceremony day, the castle burned down and with that the book. So she lost all the previous spells. So they had to restart it. So it starts <laughs> with a 27th queen. Yeah. And um, a lot of her spells, what most of what she learned to do had to do with time. She made time repeat itself, go back in time, forward, all that interesting time stuff that eventually star gets into a little bit um but definitely skywin is all about that time <laughs> and she can also make food from pure magic which is important and you'll see if you read the book uh you can get into that and how that later becomes quite important to the foundations of muni as we know it today so basically i guess she was messing around with stuff and one day she accidentally deleted the gravity and then when she tried to reverse the spell um so okay so when she uh, got rid of gravity, everyone started floating up, obviously. And she tried to reverse the spell, and everyone started flying faster. So it launched some people into space. <laughs> uh, eventually, she was able to figure it out and get everyone back down. Although, you know, if you're flying and you just get shot back down, that's not a very good thing. Good <laughs> Probably a lot of people um died that day. We, <laughs> it doesn't really specify, but Casual. we can assume that. So... Taking that information, plus what we get from, there's like these symbols in the books, which is called um, Lomumen, I believe. It's like they're how they wrote stuff before they uh, used the current system, I guess, which is looks pretty much just like how we write English. Um, so there's that. And in that page, um, or like those surrounding pages, if you decode it, it says, As a consequence, 16 humans were lost to space. They ended up inhabiting another planet, which is now a bustling world one day they will attack Muni. So that last part is really um, ominous. Very I don't know ominous. about that. Yeah, I know, right? I, so I don't know about that part. But for the first couple lines, the first chunks, I guess, 16 humans were lost to space, like Michael said, or I was talking about. Um, so 16 of them. And somehow, I don't know if humans can like breathe in space or I survive in space can. at all. That just makes no, no sense. But if they somehow were or they were teleported or something with dimensional scissors or somebody saved them they ended up inhabiting another planet which is now a bustling world and my and i personally just jumped to the conclusion okay that's earth they're talking about earth <laughs> um you know i see the word bustling and i'm like yeah there's probably talking about that how earth used to be like you know kind of there wasn't humans long, not long ago or right. not very civilized or whatever but now it could be considered a bustling world like because like we got cities and there's lots and lots of people um, and the one day they attack Muni, I don't know about that. But basically, my thoughts, like I mentioned before, since we see Marco use magic, and not only that, but he gains cheek marks within the first couple times using, if not the first time, I can't remember off the top of my head, mm -hmm. it's been a while. But um, he uses magic and stuff. And I think we've made videos before kind of hinting at how it looks like his mom might be the one 
I can't remember exactly what all the evidence was, but we but there was a little bit to talk about besides the cheek marks. Right. But it definitely is seeming like that, at least to me, that Marco is of human descent, and that could mean big things for the show. <laughs> No, I definitely think that's possible. Uh, I think it's interesting, too, because we've also theorized that Marco was kind of built or designed or born to be somewhat of an antagonist of sorts, but judging by what Toffee said, that he was like a disappointment, and there's a lot of monster symbolism with him and whatnot, and the monsters have classically, historically been enemies of humans. So the fact that, you know, she mentions that these 16 humans or the descendants of the humans will eventually attack Muni is very interesting because if that's the case, that means Marco would be somewhat born or destined to attack Muni at some point. I'm gonna cry. It's like my first theory again. <laughs> like it's literally what we've been t I've been talking about since the beginning. Um, yeah. Yeah. So just like seeing years, how we go all the way back, and somehow it always ends up bringing it to that, which is just so poetic, and I love it. And uh, yeah, I definitely think that last line could be referring to that, and. Um, he does have a seem to have a connection with the monsters. There, I know in the book there is some mention of the monster arm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, neither of us have finished the book because there is so much. Yeah, it's, a big, it's a big book. It just came out today, so. Yeah. So we're 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 inching through there. We're getting through it bit by bit, but um, there is a lot. So, I I mean, sure we have till next year for the new episodes, but I think um, this is enough to keep us entertained for a little while. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And I also offered the possibility mm -hmm. that it might not actually be Earth, potentially. So far in the book, it doesn't seem like there's any exact, like, year range, per se. Mm -hmm. Especially since she's kind of dived into time stuff. Like, who knows right. what's up with her? Yeah, you never know what she could have done. Yeah, so there's there's no there's no telling how long it was, but she says it's now a bustling world, so it seems, it seems to imply that she's, like, she was around when Earth, if, if this is Earth. It, it, was, it was she was around when Earth was still very in its infant stages, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah, maybe the humans, because uh, they already had knowledge of how to make stuff, maybe they kind of helped make Earth, you know, culture and stuff. Uh, because, you know, maybe because a lot of our stuff resembles how humans are. So it's like, how, or at least in this world, uh, in this continuity of mm -hmm. Earth, whatever. Uh, it could definitely, they could definitely could have played an impact on their like, history and stuff. There was only 16 of them, but I mean, it depends how far back in time we're talking. Right. So that's, so you were saying it might not be, but personally, I think most shows just somehow always make it like, oh, humans or Earth is like important. Like right. even almost every single time. And it does get annoying, but I mean, Marco is potentially part human. So there's that. Yeah, that'd I, be I pretty don't cool. Know. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd definitely be down for that if that were to happen, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if there are any other realms, really, that fit the description of a bustling world, per exactly. se. Maybe... I'm like I'm looking down the list of them right now. Some of them we don't know that much about. Like, some of them seem very, like... Like, for the, the Balance Lounge, for example, is like, is there more than just the Balance Lounge? Is there a city around the Balance <laughs> Lounge anywhere? Like, we don't really know. Uh, but I feel like that would be kind of a lame twist that's not like bustling. oh there's mute there's that's humans in the bounce lounge realm like that seems like kind of lame <laughs> that doesn't really make any sense yeah. uh quest maybe quest by has a city somewhere uh you know fixtopia <laughs> like i don't know something like wow. that but I, I think earth obviously makes the most sense i'm just saying mm -hmm. it could be some other planet or somewhere else completely i'm curious how she knows that they went to there like did she visit them yeah she must have she must have done that and she just left them there. <laughs> but how does she know? Yeah, like, she knows they're going to attack, but she did nothing about it. Do the other queens know about this? I guess they would if it's in the book. I think, but... I don't know who wrote. Maybe somebody else wrote that. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, I would guess she wrote it. But, yeah. But I mean, someone well, I mean, knows. I'm surprised yeah, she, they're not prepared for this. If she's, like, the queen of, like, the time, she must know. I mean, maybe she knows, like, she knew all the future and what everything that would happen. So she just saw into the future and knew they would attack, but... Maybe she's like, there's nothing I can do about it. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. uh, it's hard to say. Yeah. Super excited, because that's like, this is one of the things I really hope happens in the show. Uh, Marco does turn out to be part Mewin, but then that would be kind of conflicting on, you know, Mewin, monster. He's like a, I guess he's like a melting pot of everything. Because technically with the monster arm, he is part monster. Then also part Mewin, also part human. Uh, 
That's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> and like wants to bring balance and peace to the world. And I don't know, but Star doesn't seem like she's going. She wouldn't join Marco with this. Like, she would want you know peace with the monsters too. So I don't know. Yeah, unless he's has to fight some sort of force within him. Yeah, it says attack Muni, so. Mm -hmm. Not like Mew Min specifically, so. Another interesting thing that kind of connects to uh, Marco kind of attacking M Muni and being some sort of hidden evil, e like, like sleeper agent uh, t to attack Muni is <laughs> there's basically in the book, there's sort of their version of the Zodiac. So they have their it's own. It's called like, a Ariel sign. Yes. And yeah. uh, I'm, I'm a pony head, by the way. Uh, not, not super happy about that, but uh, basically, <laughs> Rip. basically, it, Star kind of wrote like you know who different people are, and uh, she, apparently she's a goat pig, I think it was, uh, something like that. And then she put that Marco is a dead horse, apparently. And this made me nothing. This might just be a little joke, but apparently, according to dream symbolism, a dead horse in your dreams can be the death of the strength you once found someone's friendship or situation gave you. Oh this may be the end of a relationship, friendship, career situation. Have you heard the saying, flogging a dead horse? It may be time to give up on someone or something that is no longer useful for the function of the situation intended. When you kill a horse in your dream, this may mean you hurt pe the people close to you <laughs> through self-centered selfishness. This is a nudge to take a look at yourself and your motives. <laughs> I'm sorry, so. guys. I've never, I've not heard any of this before. So I'm hearing this live, and yeah. I'm dying. So Marco is a dead horse. Oh. So we might, we might be in for some very dark and uh, feely situations between him and Star if he is really to turn evil. Also, interesting to know is that Darren Nefsi, the creator, is also a dead horse. So she chose that specifically. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, to be the dead horse. So I so guess she is. liked that one. <laughs> Yep, so there it is. It's uh, The theory is there are humans potentially hidden on Earth or another planet, but it, if it's Earth, Marco could very well be a descendant, and he could very well be a sleeper agent to attack Muni at some point, potentially destroy his relationship with Star. So good stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just the very tip of the iceberg yeah. with this book. Yeah, there's, there's so much to dive into with this book um, that we'll be able to talk about in the next coming days and weeks, however long it takes to even get through the entire book. But we've already found a couple other things that are definitely interesting. They may not be fully theory-worthy, per se, but there's definitely some stuff that might be worth kind of poking at a little bit. Any final thoughts? Nope. I'm super excited to read the rest of the book. It's uh, kind of exhausting because Eclipse's chapter is all in cursive, and my eyes <laughs> can only take so much. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember cursive being a big thing in elementary school. I never used. Oh that. yes, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm not looking forward to all that, but it's exciting nonetheless. Yep, yep. So, what do you guys think about this? Do you think this is likely? Do you think something like this is going to happen, or do you think it's some other situation entirely that we may have missed? And if you got the book, how are you liking it? And what little secrets have you found? So far, definitely let us know in the comments down below. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell for more star theories because we're going to be diving deep into this book. And you should go buy this book because it's only 20 bucks and it's super big and they put a lot of work into it, you could tell. And it's like a lot of lore and backstory that's super interesting if you're into that stuff. So you definitely go check that out. And uh, consider supporting us on Patreon so we uh, don't flog a dead horse, whatever that means. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.